Hey, I thought it would be good to do a bonus module on the beginners course, showing you some of the new features in Reason 7, starting with a look at the various audio editing improvements, which open up all sorts of new possibilities for creating parts. Just to get going quickly, I've got a new Tech House preset loaded into Rex, which is going to provide all of the drums in the tutorial. This is a great new addition to the Reason library, and is particularly useful for beginners, as it has different variations of the drum groove in each of Rex's eight slots. So one with just the top percussion, one with just kick, and so on. So let's create some accompaniment to go with this. I'll add NN19 to the rack, and I'm gonna choose the synth fifth preset, which is actually a minor chord with the notes 1, 3 and 5 of the scale. I want to create a 4 bar phrase for this part to go with the drums. The harmony is going to shift from E, so E minor, down to C sharp minor. And I think I'll have a pattern that uses the octaves, so the same notes an octave up. with an additional note in between to help ease the transition. Maybe a slide down a semitone to the D sharp in E minor. And perhaps a G sharp in C sharp. Which is not only the fifth of the scale, but also the major third in E. So it's a quirky way of getting back to E. So let's record that in. And now I can edit the notes by selecting all and quantizing in the tool window, or manually dragging them around, and also change the velocity if I need to. Right now it sounds very minor and so quite gloomy, but we can lift it by changing the chords being played. For example, playing a fifth interval with this preset, as the name suggests, changes it into an eleventh chord, as you get the additional ninth and eleventh notes on top, which make the whole preset much jazzier. So if I select all the notes in the clip, hold down Alt, and then drag them up a fifth, you can hear we get a much nicer and more interesting sound. The only other issue is that the sound is very loud and sustained right now, so it not only dominates the track, but doesn't really move with it in any way. One easy solution for this is to add Alligator, which is a filter gate effect that we look at more in the advanced course. But you can try using it for now just by adding it to tracks and loading up presets. You can hear we instantly get a much improved sound, certainly when this NN19 part is playing with drums. And we can now try out some different presets to see what works best. We'll come back to the synth part shortly, but for now, let's make a bass part to go with this. I've added Thor to the rack with a slightly edited bass patch loaded. I thought it might be good to have the bass part ascending, as the synth part is descending. So we'll go from the E up to the C sharp. Maybe via the G sharp. As the harmony kind of shifts at the end of the bar with the D sharp in the synth part. 
so it will fit better than having a G in the bass, which would be the minor third in E minor. And this will also give it more of a major sound. And then we can go up to the E at the end. As for the rhythm, it might be nice to have it on different beats of the bar from the synth part, so we get more of an alternating feel, and so a more interesting rhythm. It's also nice to have a regular repeating pattern if possible, to keep it simple and catchy. So I think I'll go for dotted notes across the two bars. By that I mean have a note every beat and a half, which can create a nice pattern. If I draw this in instead of play it, I can show you a different way of doing it. So I'm creating a four bar clip here, I need to draw notes on the first beat, then halfway between beats two and three, then on the fourth beat, then halfway between beats one and two of the next bar, then on the third beat, and I think I'll make them all a beat long. Then we can copy those notes up to the C sharp. And now let's take a listen to that. And now I'll draw in those extra transition notes, which are the G sharp at the end of bar two, and the E at the end of the phrase. If I make them start just before the last beat, then the rhythm will be a bit more interesting. And we'll also get the legato effect, so you won't hear the envelope at the start of the note, and it will just slide the lower frequencies up, which will make it subtler, but that's fine. So you can hear now if I bring the other synth part in, that the parts work quite nicely together. I've added an extra part in now, which is Kong, being played by a MIDI clip, repeatedly triggering a clap sound. I played this in live, so if you look at the notes, you can see they're slightly out of time. I could quantize them at this stage, but instead I want to demonstrate the audio editing facility. So I'm going to pretend that this is a percussion sound I've recorded in live with a mic. To do this, I'll just activate the record source switch on Kong's mix device, and then create an audio track in the song, and choose Kong as the input to the track. Then I can record an audio loop for the clap sound. So double clicking on the audio file I just recorded of the Kong part, you can see immediately it looks different from Reason 6 as we have slice markers along the waveform, which have been placed on every transient, or loud burst of sound, so at the start of each clap. What this means is that we can edit the timing of the claps by dragging the markers around. You can see they snap to grid positions when I do this, if I have snap turned on above. The way this works is to time stretch or warp the audio either side of the marker to make the timing right. So when I drag a clap forward in time, it stretches the previous clap. One way of leaving the previous clap unaffected is to add an extra marker, which is done using the pencil tool. Then when I drag the clap, you can see the one before stays in place. Markers are removed simply with the erase tool. Another option is to select all with the edit menu command, and then quantize the slices using the options in the tool window, just like when you quantize MIDI notes. So I could quantize them exactly to the grid positions if I wanted the timing to be spot on. Or choose a lower percentage to keep a slightly more natural timing. Or I can choose shuffle, and then quantize them according to the global shuffle amount, set on the regroove mixer if you remember, to change the whole feel of the clip.
There are a few other nice features here, such as the ability to edit a group of slice markers without affecting the rest of the clip. This is done by selecting the markers you want to adjust by dragging over them, and then dragging the group handle below, which you can see moves all of the markers together as one. Another useful thing here is that this group can be time stretched or warped differently from the rest of the clip if you like too, as it gets treated like one slice with them all selected like this. So for example, if I drag the last marker here, then you can see it stretches all the markers in the group together, so keeps the relative timing, but leaves all the other markers in the clip in place. And also, there's a handy edit command that's been added now, allowing you to instantly slice up clips in the arrangement for even quicker editing. If you select all, or a portion of markers, you can then choose Split at Slices to chop up the clip, allowing you to immediately grab those bits of audio and delete them, or use them elsewhere in your arrangement. And finally, if at any point you want to go back to the original timing of the clip, so lose any of the marker editing that you've done, then you can choose Revert Slices from the menu, and the original timing will be restored. I've recorded the main synth part onto a new audio track now too, in the same way, as I want to show you another cool audio feature that's new to Reason 7, which again makes editing and creating unique sounds really easy. If I bring up the menu on the expanded audio clip, you can see in the Bounce submenu, we now have an option for Bounce Clip to Rex Loop, which is an amazing addition. This converts the clip to a rex file, which gets placed in the self-contained samples folder for the song, as you can see in the tool window. Then I just double click that file to open it up in rex, which then opens up a whole new world of possibilities, with all the controls available on that device. For instance, I instantly have access to rex's filter section, where I can add even more filter enveloping to the whole sound. If you remember from earlier on the course, I can apply this by lowering the filter cutoff, then increasing the filter envelope amount, and adjusting the envelope parameters alongside to create a different sound. Here how bringing the decay amount down makes the sound choppier, as I get a briefer burst of high frequencies at the start of notes. Whereas adding some attack instead gives me the wah sound of the filter opening, to totally change the character of the part. And if you really want to mess with the sound, you can adjust the parameters of individual slices using the dials below the display, or even more easily using the slice edit mode display. To enter slice edit mode, simply activate the switch, then click on one of the parameters just below the display, and draw in a curve, or turn slices on or off. For example, to make the pitch go up and down, I just draw in a curve like so. But I want the pitch to stay where it is, so I'll undo that, and then draw in some different parameter curves instead like maybe adjusting the filter frequency. You can always loop different parts of the phrase to make it easier to hear the section you're editing. And you can also create some cool effects by reversing certain slices. So these new features have enabled us to quickly create a nice variation of the original loop, which is reduced in frequency content and given more synchronized shaping to help it blend more in the mix. Have a listen to it compared with the original recorded clip.
So this gives us two different versions of the loop to either layer together or probably more likely alternate. Maybe using the new one in the main break and the original one in breakdowns where there's less going on. The last thing I want to show you in this session is the Audiomatic Retro Transformer. This is an effect that you can download from Propellerhead's online store if you haven't already, as it's available for free with Reason 7. It's a simple to use effect that allows you to degrade or colorize the signal in a particular way to enhance it or give it a retro sound. It doesn't need much explanation as you can just select a preset you want and then turn up the transform dial to adjust the amount or character of the transformation. Just to pick an obvious example, if I choose the wash setting, which is like a heavy distortion and delay algorithm with lots of feedback. Then the transform dial is actually a filter cutoff to lessen the amount of high frequencies in the sound. After which you can use the dry wet dial to choose the balance of affected to non affected sound. This is a really great addition to Reason 7, and is a lot of fun to play with, so I encourage you to try it out if you've not yet. So we've now got a nice basis for a track here, with enough sounds to start laying something out. Check out the module session if you want to inspect anything in this lesson more closely, and hit me up with questions if you have any. See you next time.